of beyond law clc and ulls punjab university chandigarh we welcome you all to a yet another engaging session and the topic for today is cyber security and privacy cyber security is one of the growing subjects not only for an in professional students and the lawyers but for a common man also privacy as such is a word which is commonly being used and more specifically with the relevance of cyber and while we were holding webinars we thought that uh, we should have the insights on this particular subject because it's a subject in which we commonly discussed among ourselves that yes there is a threat to the cyber security as well more specifically in the lines of privacy how to go about it what are our rights what are how to go how to look into it with a deep insights amongst us we have mr valumaji balu who is a renowned advocate coupled with the fact that he has been teaching <coughs> with his insights not only in the national judicial academy which is one of the most esteemed institution for the purposes of where the judicial officers are trained his insights can be also examined from the fact that he has been speaking on different forums including the rotary club different schools police academies as well as the public prosecutor he has also the served as a member of the censor board for good 7 years so once it comes to the privacy and cyber they are also quite interwoven so we welcome you uh, without taking much time because people are more interested to hear the issues right from you the topic which we commonly do discuss but the insights invariably large number of people do not know because the word itself sometimes the word is so common that one feels one shouldn't read about it because he has the insights but actually if one introspects oneself then he realizes that there are much more and once you learn from a someone who specializes in that it actually gives you not only a 2d vision but to a 3d vision for a thought process which is quite stimulating for the mind as well as for the food for thought over to you sir thanks a lot for the introduction mr vikas i am very grateful for beyond law for inviting me from the southernmost corner of this country to reach you people during the period of confinement anyhow the subject which is not having any confinement even during the covid is one subject which is cyber crime and the cyber space and in fact we must be all realizing now we must have realized that the cyber space is the only space which is now connecting people by all means in all fields in all walks of life but at the same time when it comes to law the world is still fighting hard and working hard to know and understand what is really cyber space and what is really cyber crime and the basic says whatever the offense committed by using the computer or by using the system that can be called as a cyber crime but when the computer was introduced it was an innovative subject but when the whole world is having a small gadget in their hand in the name of a 3g or 4g connection a small smartphone or apple phone the meaning has reached every pocket of the world the cyber space is now in every pocket of a man and in his palm and if he says that i am very innocent i am ignorant that means he is cheating himself and all walks of life is now connected with the digital world digital world in the sense when it is respect when it is compared in respect of privacy i used to always address in all my sessions and meetings to say that we are digitally naked digitally naked means every activity of a man of an individual 
is now monitored tracked and surveillanced by any agency or an individual or by a service provider when it is happening so if somebody says that i'm innocent i don't know what is cyber privacy that is not going to help it but why i say that we are digitally naked means any person who has got a mobile phone or a smartphone or a tab or anything his location what he speaks what he writes in mail what he dictates what he types in whatsapp including what whatsapp i'll come to later and what all the messages he is sending everything is reaching the hands of somebody either through the service provider or by the hackers so what is actually happening people are always thinking i'm safe i'm using i'm taking all precautions to save myself to save my uh, data to secure my data everything in order to maintain the time safe which is not so <laughs> the moment the digital world has invaded into the human's life slowly from 1994 we will say the 1994 the mobile phone was introduced before that computer was introduced the 1994 that mobile phone was introduced it was only a phone which was receiving calls and sending calls receiving messages and was used to send messages even we were paying at the rate of 16 rupee 80 paisa during the peak hours for making a call to receive a call and 8 rupees and 40 paisa like that it was a status symbol during the time when it was introduced but a country like india where a third world country now in a population of more than 130 crores around 90 to 100 crore people are having mobile phones out of which smartphones are available with more than 40 to 50 crores even 70 to 80 crore people are having <laughs> and it has now come prevalent that people are having two sim cards three sim cards like that when you calculate like that sometimes more than the population the population of the mobile phone exceeds in that sense in a third world country where people are still illiterate to an extent of larger population without giving them much awareness about the cyber space without giving proper introduction what is a cyber crime without giving introduction what is information technology act now the gadget has reached the common hands common people's hand and without mobile phone or without connectivity or without having any gadget now a common man's life cannot run cannot run through to book a ticket for a train or a flight to book a ticket for a cinema or to may pay bills to make purchase and to make payment to each and every sector of life the digital payment is made now mostly by people by using the cyber space or by using electronic transfer when the gadgets were introduced the human kind was not sure that it is going to become the boss one day which is in his palm is going to rule himself slowly the digital slavery has started the digital slavery in the sense what i say suppose you are taken away you are plucked away from your mobile phone for about 15 minutes from your pocket you don't have to go to any asylum or you don't have to go to any place to become mad oh, okay. because i used to say very uh, humorously that those days if people want to victimize somebody or to take revenge they used to go and pray use all the tantrics mantram and all that um, they used to go to temples and pray for the uh, uh, revenge but nowadays it is not like that if you want somebody to be taken a revenge you just take his mobile go away for about 15 minutes immediately he'll become mad the problem is he will forget his phone number he will not remember his own phone number you just ask him what is the phone number of your daughter he will try to scroll you ask him what is the phone number of your son he will start scrolling 
you ask him what is the number of your wife, he will start scrolling. You could have seen many times people that once if you ask them, what is the phone number of your wife, they will start scrolling, 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 it will come wife one, wife two. What is that wife one, wife two means? No, no, my wife has got two SIM cards, is going to be the answer. If you ask the same question to the wife, she will scroll. So even our memory is now hypothecated to the device. The moment it is introduced, the first casualty is our memory. Memory of the humankind is stored in the gadget in alphabetical order by the device, allowing the human mind to think, I don't have to store anything in my mind. I don't have to remember anything. The moment if I want to say, or if I want to search something from the um, device or from the space or from any search site, I will have to just type it, it will automatically prompt and come to me into my table or into my hand. So what had happened to the memory already, it has been hypothecated to the device. Slowly humankind started become a slave to the digital. That is the electronic devices. Now man has become a slave of electronic gadgets and devices. When the situation has come, you must have all read a statement around four or five years back when Mark Zuckerberg came to India, he said that I am the second most populous person in the world. He proudly claimed that I am the second most populous person in the world means next to China. India is the most populous country and Zuckerberg claims view of the Facebook and uh, WhatsApp, I have become the boss of the world. That statement was not taken seriously when it was delivered by Zuckerberg. Now it has been proved as a reality during the period of COVID. Why? During the period of COVID, what is the privacy compromised? What is the security compromised is the biggest question. Because when it was canvassed by the government, when it was introduced by the union government, that you must make most of the payments only through digital platforms. As much as possible, you must start using the digital platforms for all your communications, not only mails and WhatsApp and other things, but for other purposes also, for making payment to government, to make your EB bills, to make your telephone bills, to make your Wi-Fi bills, uh, Wi-Fi connection, whatever it is, people are now trained to make all their payments by using the digital platforms. At the same time, at the same time, do they know that how much security they are taking, how they are likely to be cheated. So during this period of COVID and confinement, the trend which is going on in the cyberspace is, one is mostly phishing, you must have heard about it. By sending any email to anybody, they may be asking for a email details or your account details, of a bank or a particular password, they will say that we are updating your, updating your data in the um, website of our bank. There is a particular gang which is operating from Chhattisgarh area. The whole village is trained only for the purpose. They have a system of making phone calls throughout randomly to almost, uh, they, they reach the customers of bank. They say that I'm calling from SBI. Uh, you are, uh, ATM card is now blocked. We want to verify the details. Immediately, you'll have to uh, disclose the number and other things. The next minute, the money mules will be transferring your money from your account, which will reach a small, tiny island called Reunion Island or Madagascar, some places like that, by cloning and other fraudulent methods. Even if you know that your money has been fraudulently taken, transferred, the most maximum you can do is you can just register an FIR. After registering the FIR, though the Information Technology Act says any act committed inside India or from outside India, the, still the case can be registered. But by registering an FIR, what is the maximum ultimate result you will be getting is only getting the copy of the FIR. Because the moment money is transferred to somebody's account through money mules, <laughs> 
you will never be able to either see the person's arrest or detention or brought back to India for the purpose of facing the trial. When it is happening like that, even three, four days back, I received an email and also SMS. In the SMS, it is mentioned, it is very, very urgent. Contact me only in the email. That email ID is given. The moment you go and click that email ID, automatically it will take you to the site of that other person. If you fill any parts, any details or data in that, they will be in a position to hack all your data by sitting in the remotest corner of the world. This is how the phishing activities and other things are going on. At the same time, pornography, offenses against women, offenses against children, domestic violence, everything is taking place only through the cyberspace during this period of COVID. When it is so, what the countries have done so far, they are so aware that it is happening. But this is one field which is evolving every day on its own with the introduction of a lot of technologies. When every other technology is introduced, the law becomes old. The law becomes old. And then we need to go for amendment. Any type of amendment we are giving into effect to the acts and other things, the next revolution comes in technology. So we will have to modify ourselves mentally first, then legally next. When it is happening like that continuously, the humankind has now come to a position whether it is possible for them that without cyberspace or cyber field, they can exist. Any branch of law can now go ahead without touching the computer field. Highly impossible. Right from reading a judgment, writing a judgment, and even fixing the meetings like that. Now even the uh, courts are now uh, going through the digital platform. And uh, hearings are going through teleconferencing. When the whole world is now switching over to the digital world, can we sit in our room and claim very innocently that I don't know anything about the computer, I don't know anything about uh, cybercrime and all that. That means we are not updating ourselves, then we'll be called as digital illiterates. Digital illiterates means during those days when people were educated themselves in the village, villages, Village people commonly used to say, I don't know how to put my signature. I used to put my only my LTI uh, finger thumb for all my all the purpose of my uh, making my presence for any registration and all that. Now the biometric entry, which has been introduced by the digital media, has become the hallmark of the same thing, which was which were uh, done by our elders those days. So digital illiteracy means I don't know anything about computer. I don't know anything about information technology. It's not going to be a good answer. Every person, not only a lawyer, from every field, <clears throat> even an older man about 75, 80 years, 80 years old, sitting in the house, also should know what is happening around. Most of the elders used to say, I don't know anything, but all my grandchildren are playing with the computer like that. They are so savvy, they are so smart, but I don't know anything means you are going to be cheater in your own house. Each and every house has become an island on its own. If you have three rooms, all the three people, wife, husband, <clears throat> daughter or son sitting in the other rooms and communicating among themselves only through the digital media. <laughs> Everybody is now uh, engaged only with the phone or uh, internet or anything else. When the situation is going like that, the act introduced by our own government in 2000, Information Technology Act, even after so many amendments up to 2008 and 2010, whether that law is sufficient in 2020, we must say it is not sufficient. Because the penal sections which are given in Information Technology Act the amount of privacy which has been compromised throughout the world by using the nuances and techniques by the um, cyber crime criminals 
every other day. You must have all seen when the American president was elected during the period of Obama, almost all the presidents and the prime ministers of other countries went and made a special request to the American president. Please don't have any surveillance over us. Please don't spy over us. Please don't do any activity which is likely to compromise our privacy, our own privacy. That was initiated by Angela Merkel of Germany, followed by the president of Brazil. Each and every person went and pleaded with another country requesting not to violate the privacy of the presidents and prime ministers, leave alone a common public. Even when Trump was elected as the president, you must have read the statement. He said, I miss my smartphone that has been taken by the security agencies. I've been given with a small phone where I can only make calls and receive calls. And Trump made a special statement. Don't send any emails to the White House. Please send couriers by papers. So the country which claims they have the highest form of technology available, solutions available, is not believing the cyberspace and cyber world. And that president is requesting, please send me courier. And he says, I miss my smartphone. I cannot use my smartphone. When the condition has become like that, we have given the smartphone more than 120 crore people of this country. When you go to the remote corner of this country, till today we can see people traveling on the rooftop of the buses, even over the top of the trains. And the literacy is very, very poor. They don't know what is password. They don't know what is the login ID. They don't know what is the gadget, what is the 3G, what is the 4G. And having given all the technology in their hand, we are trying to reach them. We are making them to become a compulsory activity of the life. They, they should be connected with the digital world every day. When they are so illiterate, they don't know what is what. Even the judiciary or the parliament, this incident I am repeating every other, in every other session. This is what had happened in the parliament of our country when our ex-president Pranab Mukherjee was attending a session. He received a marketing call in his mobile phone from a particular bank demanding for a loan. Then Pranab Mukherjee got shocked. Immediately he called the next person who was sitting next to him is Ambika Sony. Ambika, what is this? I'm receiving a phone call like that during the session. She said two minutes back, I also received a call. That was the first incident that Troy took the initiative to curtail the activities of the telemarketing. <clears throat> so we are taking our own lessons only from the incident. If, it, if at all, it is likely to happen to the top bureaucrats or to the president like candidates. Most of you must have read, most of you must have seen when the 2G spectrum case was going in the Supreme Court on a day to day basis. When the Supreme Court was hearing the matter, one day the bench went on to the extent of asking the counsel, we are monitoring the case on a day-to-day basis. Actually, we would like to know that the 2G, 3G, 4G we are now discussing about, actually we don't understand what is 2G. Was the question raised by the bench. Then the counsel explained what is 2G. Then they said, oh, it is uh, receiving calls and making calls, receiving data and sending data in a smaller speed is 2G, that is the second generation phone. Oh, we don't understand then what is 3G? 3G is only with better speed. Oh, I see then what is 4G? 4G is the next generation, which is going to have a greater speed for transferring videos and audios and other things. I will go to the extent of saying that the judiciary do not know law is not the uh, subject we have to. It is not the thing of their generation, when they were educated, it was not there at all. It was introduced in between. So even the judiciary was having a hesitation to understand what is 2G, 3G, 4G means. <laughs> judiciary is not clear. Parliament is not clear. Parliamentarians are not clear. But at the same time, like Corona, it has reached each and every corner of the world. 
you cannot come out of the clutches of cyber space or cyber crime unless or otherwise you have the awareness among yourselves where to stand where to draw a line or you are always under risk the sections which are introduced through the information technology act starting from 65 to 80 82 only 15 17 sections are dealing with the offenses and punishments though there are certain particular sections which says that your privacy cannot be compromised because if your primary privacy is discussed under 66e 66e discusses with privacy 66f discusses discussing with cyber terrorism and what can be had through computer what are all the offenses committed by using the computer system and what is the publication which is made against women against children how it can be punished and all that though it is discussed like that whether it is sufficient with great respect to my friends it is not at all sufficient and when the law was introduced the power to register a case was given only to the assistant commissioner but during the case when two girls were involved in pune case the circular and the direction was given by the supreme court that it is not necessary that anybody can register a case at the same time an amendment was also made after 2008 any station officer can register a case any station officer can register a case means even a sub inspector can register the case provided the sub inspector should know what is a cyber crime whether the crime committed by using an electronic gadget or electronic equipment whether it will come under the purview of the act which section it is attracting how the fir should be registered how the material should be collected how it should be preserved how it should be produced during the course of the trial no proper training has been given to the police authorities till today we have only very limited cyber forensic laboratories like ahmedabad pune hello chennai hello hello shalo shalo ma power point ma power point dantra arma Uh, sir, can I connect you after the session? My session is continuing. Hello. Seven o'clock. Right. Are you Are you getting my uh, video? Uh, just a little dark. It's dark. Probably you, you have closed the video on your side. I hello. Can I, I can close. Yes. Now, now, now it's better. Now it's better. Now. No, you have stopped the video, sir, on your side. It's okay now. Uh, sir, still dark. Uh, though, though your photo is visible, but it's darker on the side. The power has gone. Okay. The power has gone. So it, uh, you can continue, but we are able to hear you. Your yeah. voice itself is good enough to engage us. I am. I am just trying to switch on a light. One minute. Light torch on. Is it okay? Yeah, perfect. It it, it clearly shows that where there is a will, there is a way. No, 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 no. Now showing the face is not the matter now. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Little disturbance. I'm sorry. So any initiative which has been taken by the government, it has really not reached the public. Among funnel, it has not reached the public. they are not even able to understand what's happening around but at the same time the cyber space starts introducing every other day either one app or one platform for public to interact with others for example after the introduction of facebook twitter and instagram whatsapp we can proudly say that the whole world is now connected i am having everything in my palm global village is the concept 
uh, I have the world in my fingertip. The same trend is also in the hands of the criminals. The same idea has reached the minds of criminals. He is also having the whole world in his fingertips. We must have all read and seen any offense committed nowadays is thoroughly, brilliantly used either by learning by using the WhatsApp or by having a search from the Google. In one particular case, you must have seen how the privacy is compromised. We are all every other day seeing that the police is investigating cases by using the CCTV cameras. Whether that CCTV camera installed in each and every office, in every house, in some houses in the bedrooms also, whether it is safe or not. Last week, we people might have seen and read one leading company which is giving the service of CCTV camera. A particular person who is working in that company has taken away the password and other details of his customers running into 220 in number. And by sitting in his house, he was watching all the activities of the people connected through the CCTV. Police claim, government claim that we have installed more than 4 lakh, 5 lakh of CCTV cameras in the streets and other places. But who is the service provider for all the CCTV cameras? Where all the data are going, how it is distributed, nobody knows. For example, I have a CCTV camera in my house. I have a connection. That particular app is called IVMS. That IVMS, once if you go and register your email ID and password, it is showing that the company is available in Guangzhou in China. So anytime I forget my password and reconnect with that CCTV camera, it is again getting connected with the Guangzhou province in China and then only I'm getting my connection. If the person who is installing my CTV camera is taking all the details of my password and other things, he will be able to sit in his house and watch my activities. If you are connecting your door, smart locks and all other things like that through apps, Whenever we are making registration into the apps, nobody knows what is there in the app. They just keep on pressing next, 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 next without reading anything. And most of the apps are this device, most of the apps are designed in such a way that it is getting permission to have access to your contacts. It is having permission to get access into your location. It is also having permission to switch on your microphone in your device. This is what one example I have explained to you. All the devices are connected through CCTV camera. They are having the servers either in China or in some other place. Where is the privacy available for a man? The privacy has been defined as a fundamental right by the Supreme Court, but the privacy is in open public by the devices. And when the devices are used without even knowing what is what, and one particular case, a person started stealing motorbikes from parked places. Most of the motorbikes will be parked with the documents. The moment he takes the motorbike from that particular place, he will take the documents from the motorbike. By seeing the chassis number in the document, he has to inscribe it on the other bike stolen by him. He takes an innovative way of doing. He goes to the YouTube and reads from the YouTube how to inscribe numbers without making more scratches in this chases. So he is printing the chases number in the other bike 
from the stolen documents and started selling the motorbikes more than 22 into 25 numbers within a matter of one month during the period of COVID. Last week, he was arrested in Chennai. So by sitting at home, during this period, everybody is using YouTube, everybody is using Instagram, everybody is using Twitter, and everybody is connected with the digital world. So any type of offense, when it is committed, even to register a case, even to register a case, you are under the mercy of the police. The police do not know. If you go to the court, we have not trained the courts. And all the controversies are coming only through the public platform. Bank accounts are stolen. If you make an electronic transfer, your amounts are siphoned. If you are using an ATM card, if you are going to any shop and use your ATM card, cloning is there. By taking the cloning of your card, you know that skimmers are used. The moment you give your card to anybody in a shop, the skimmer which is fixed in the machine is copying your code and also your uh, password. The password is sent through a message to a third person. That third person is immediately making an ATM card or a credit card, cloning it, sending those messages to a person who is sitting in the remote corner of a world and immediately your money is certified. This is the methodology used by the cybercrime criminals. After committing the offense, though the act says nothing is possible throughout the country, people might have seen the Nigerian scam. The Nigerian scam is such an innovative way it is done. I have made so many appeals in all platforms, including the National Judicial Academy and the State Judicial Academy and also in the Supreme Court that a person who is connected with the mafia gang in Nigerian scam is able to get a SIM card from our local service providers like Vodafone, uh, BSNL, Airtel, idea like that. By using that SIM card, he is able to send messages to individuals saying that you have won a Britain lottery about 6 crore pounds, 3 crore pounds. You have won a lottery. This message is sent by using a local number. When the local number is given, there is a provision in our country to get a SIM card that you must submit your other details, address proof, photo identity, everything you must provide. Then only you are in a position to get a SIM card. But in our country, you can go to any pawn shop, just buy any two samosas and also a SIM card. When SIM cards are given like that, that is used even by people for the purpose of Nigerian scams where crores and crores money are being looted from the public. I'm very sorry to say here, only most of the educated people have become victims for the Nigerian scam because they don't verify. Even if they verify also, they believe that it is not going to happen to me, it's going to happen to some other person after some time, so I will escape. In one particular case, a PG candidate of Madras University around four or five years back have lost 56 lakhs by responding to a Nigerian scam, paying money on installments. After losing 56 lakhs, she lodged an FIR saying that I received a mail and message from a phone number stating that I won a lottery in a British uh, company that, uh, which assured me six crores or six lakh pounds something. Will you not think, will you not allow your mind to work? I have not purchased any lottery. I have not uh, uh, entered into any scheme. I have not uh, enrolled myself into any online game. Then how my name will be selected for six lakh pound or six crore pound, whatever it is. This is greedy in nature. <laughs> Educated people are more responsible to become victims on the cyberspace. Privacy is concerned, it is one area. Criminal activities are concerned, it is other area. Which area is not connected through cyberspace now? Each and every walk of life, every part of life, minute by minute, moment by moment, you are living with the cyberspace. 
to call anybody to speak to anybody to spend any message send any message receive any message send any mail to receive the account to make your account to make your payment for everything you are connected with the digital world but you do not know what is a digital world even digital signature has not been explained to our people properly what is electronic signature what is digital signature asymmetric asymmetric technologies used public key and private keys are used for generating an electronic signature digital signature though it is defined in the act what is a digital signature that digital signature can be accessed only by using a public key and a private key both should sync together any document can be signed electronically that can be used as an evidence before any court of law even for registration entering into contracts but once if that is to be hacked whether that electronic signature can be hacked or cut and paste though so many security measures are given how many of us know to go probe read learn and then to execute nowadays courier service people are coming they are delivering you a courier cover and immediately asking for a signature in a device which has been brought by him by just showing a pad he is asking you to put your signature over the screen will you make it normally i don't do it because i will say the moment i put my signature on that pad it can be stored in that device but that particular courier is delivered only for that particular consignment on that day with the consignment number of for that cover only the moment you receive and put your signature where they are making an entry it is only tallied with that particular delivery it is blank and it is simply received from you that signature which is put on the pad can be stored the same signature can be cut and made as a paste in any other consignment which is you are not lawfully about to receive or to deny that i don't want that this is a small and simple example i never make my signature in any pad if it is shown by a courier delivery man simply ask for the paper i'll see the consignment number then only i'll put my physical signature in the paper i will say that i will never put my signature in the device you can still refuse they cannot demand in so many places in our world and we we are making our presence either by way of fixing our fingerprint even in a small device like apple phone or samsung smartphone and all that everybody is proud to say that moment i put my fingerprint my phone will open that is the password but when you register your fingerprint in your mobile phone how many times it demands you to put your finger on the device minimum 5 to 10 times it lasts you to put your finger over it every time it says it is verified put it again keep it again keep it again keep it again finally it will say that it is registered the registered fingerprint whether it is stored in your device or whether it is stored by the service provider or whether it is stored by the uh, stored in the cloud server of apple or samsung or by the manufacturer that fingerprint is now available in the cloud of that particular company your face recognition is also done by the devices so a face recognition means we do not know whether it takes only the three dimensional view of the face or a three dimensional photo of that person also will be able to open that phone any person who is taking or flicking away and compromising with the password and misusing that phone for committing any offense the act makes it very clear unless or otherwise you prove that you have taken due care it will be assumed that you only use the device for the purpose of committing the offense so when the security is not properly taught the moment you put your finger pin your fingerprint we don't know where it is stored the moment we store our face facial recognition we do not know where it is going to be stored the future investigation by the police and other things is to be under the under the uh, by using the artificial intelligence and facial recognition facial recognition cameras are going to rule here after the world 
everywhere it is going to be fixed on the lamp posts and in public places even if you are going for a protest also nowadays you could see that the drones are flying over your head the drones can come and take a closer view of your face in a mass of 100 and 200 it can register all the faces who are in the street and take the pictures of that person that can be sent to the investigating agency where immediately it will be verified with your other details and other things you can be isolated from the society digitally you can be switched off all the facilities given by the government all the benefits you are enjoying by using your cards and all that even to booking your flight ticket can be banned by an investigating agency or by the government this is called the switching off mode switching off mode means future imprisonment or to make a person in confinement there need not be any prisons there need not be any confinement or containment centers simply they can digitally switch off a person and make him available to sit in his house and suffer on his own and it had happened already tested with dominic strasscon dominic strasscon was the presidential candidate for french elections for about 10 50 10 years back when he went to america there was a sexual allegation against him that he tried to molest a woman who attended his uh, uh, needs in a room after the complaint he was arrested a small anklet was fixed in his around his leg he was confined in a small room the moment he goes out of that room the anklet which is connected with the uh, investigating agency will make alarm and uh, alert sounds so that he cannot move out of the house he was wearing the tanklet dominic strasscon was the vice president of the international monetary fund by the time he was arrested the same technology was used for more than 1500 students who went on illegal visas and joined an illegal uh, the unrecognized university in america all the 1500 students were detained by american government by fixing the anklets when drones are going to use that face recognition technology when artificial intelligence is going to be used for registering the movement of a person even this arogya sedu which has been introduced by the government during the period of covid when andres and france has alerted the icrt that is indian computer emergency response team the indian computer emergency response team was responsible for all the activities that should be monitored by the agency appointed by the central government any activities positive or negative in the cyber phase they have to give the advisory to the government anderson said that aragya sedu is not safe we have given all the intimation about how it could be compromised by other persons and the data available with the service provider can be hacked by somebody because already more than 10 crore people have registered themselves by using the apps that app is tracking the locality of a person who has been shown as covid positive in order to check that he is not moving out of his house the map is following the map is tracking whether he is moving from the place of confinement to other place which is very helpful for the health care activities and the officers to find out the moment whether he is whether he keeps on moving and spreading the virus and the government has given an explanation no no it is fully secured but they have not come out with complete details whether it is really safe or not so when the flights were allowed to operate earlier there was a statement by the government that each and every person who wants to fly has to install that rbs sedu app as a matter of mandatory compulsory for booking your flight tickets then after the hue and cry after the questions of privacy and other things were raised in the public platform slowly it was withdrawn now say they only you have to submit a disclosure form stating that i am not affected by corona even an app introduced by the government itself is doubtful how many apps have been introduced for example tiktok tiktok in the sense the whole country was crying that it should be banned you must have seen very recently there was a war between tiktok 
TikTok and uh, um, YouTube between two individuals who has got more than 1.7 million subscribers, one person and another person uh, has having 1.5 million. Both of them were having a fights over uh, TikTok and YouTube uh, describing that uh, this is more famous, that is more famous. But TikTok is an app developed by a Chinese company. That Chinese company's app is being used for more than millions and millions of people throughout the world by recording all their activities of life. But we must all understand, my friends, that China is not having Google. China is not having Facebook. China is not having WhatsApp. China is not having Twitter. China is not having Instagram. A country with a population of more than 150 crores has kept away everything. But the whole world is under the supervision and monitoring of these type of apps. There are so many apps, even if you are taking a photograph by using your mobile phone, just go to that uh, photos, and go to the corner, click that at the right corner, you will be able to see date, time, place, and the altitude of the place, which part of the world you were standing, by using what lens, what is the speed of the shutter you used, by using what lens you have taken that particular photograph is available with the Google. But Google says we are safe. But the FTC of the American government, FTC has imposed a penalty of $5 billion for Google company for compromising, for not maintaining the data of the customers. Google was brought to the parliament. Sundar Pichai was made to appear in the parliament to give explanations about the data safety. Sundar Pichai was telling one particular question was raised to him. Whenever we are entering the name of the president, it is showing as an idiot. Why it is happening so? Why it is showing only his name when, when we Type the name of our president showing it yet. The explanation given by Mr. Sundar Pichai, CEO of Google is the algorithm in such a way it is stored. The predictive test stored in the servers. If it is stored in such a way, there are 200 patterns of storing the materials in the server. When it is stored in such a way, the memory is stored in such a way in the server as it is given. So when a search is going for it, the predictive text shows in such a manner it is stored. Suppose if it is taken as a task, if it is, if it is given as an assignment for a company, it is stored in such a way. So people, whoever is going for such particular search will get only the predicted result. That is how Google was taken for a task after the elections of the American elections with the connection with the Cambridge Analytica of a British company. Cambridge Analytica was responsible for sending so many defamatory messages about the candidates and it was responsible for making a change in the election results itself. Even that company was fine. But technologically superior companies who are having most of the people in their hand are fined in European Union, in UK, by the FTC in America. What is the privacy agreement those companies have signed with the Indian government is not made public till today. When the full bench judgment of our Honorable Supreme Court says Privacy is a fundamental right. What is a privacy agreement entered with those companies by the government of India has not been tabled before the court of law till today. When the mob lynching was going on, WhatsApp company was called by the Supreme Court asking for the details. Can you give the origin of the message? sent by whom, received by whom, 
whatsapp company said it is technically not possible for us to submit those details maximum we can restrict the forward messages from 256 to 5 when you are restricting the forwarding message from 256 to 5 the company says we are not in a position to give the origin of the message where from it is originated the affidavit filed by the whatsapp company is end to end encryption is assured by our company even whatsapp cannot intercept when WhatsApp says that we cannot intercept, is it not against the telecommunications law of our country where the investigating agencies have got the power to intercept illegal messages sent or received or communications originated and received by various people or various agencies, even including, sorry, including terrorist organizations. When the government is not in a position to intercept, Government investigating agencies or forensic uh, forensic agencies like uh, cyber forensic agencies are not able to intercept a message. When the company has made it as a policy and filing an affidavit before the court of law that end-to-end -end 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 encryption is given by the WhatsApp. My dear friends, I make a serious request through this platform. Just go to WhatsApp go to settings and find out you could see there is a declaration made by the company in the settings you could see end-to-end -end encryption is assured even whatsapp cannot intercept a moment a message is sent from whatsapp from one person to other person either by audio or by video the moment it reaches the destined person it will not be available in the server at all even WhatsApp company cannot intercept. The decryption technology has not been shared. But at the same time, an Israeli company, because a software developed by the company, is having access with more than 1,500 prominent persons of the world of their WhatsApp account, hacked into their account and taken details. WhatsApp company has lodged a complaint against the Pegasus software of the Israeli company in an American court. And they have also intimated the persons personally that your account is compromised. But the end-to-end -end encryption is assured. When it is against the sovereign nature of the laws available in the country, the WhatsApp is now available with more than 100 crore people of this country used for all purposes we could still see the maximum assurance as given by the whatsapp company that once if you scan the code available in the settings with your computer of your friend's account if both codes are tallied that end-to-end -end encryption is assured between these two subscribers even that is not clear to you, you could see 60 numbers will be given in that. If you read, if you take the phone of your friend and open his WhatsApp account and your account and read that 60 number which is matching with your phone, it is assured that any communication between these two instruments are secure. End-to-end -end encryption is given. Here I want to give an explanation. Section 69 of the information technology gives all power to the government to decrypt, to monitor, to block, to supervise, and also to enter into the system and take all the decrypted codes for the purpose of investigation. 2018, November, the government has made a circular under section 69, 69.1, 69.2 of the Information Technology Act that the government has given power to 10 agencies of our own investigating agencies like CBI, RAW, uh, Customs Authority, uh, Revenue Authorities, and local police, and uh, military signaling police. All people have been given power by the Amendment of the Rule of 69 of Information Technology Act, November 2018. Any citizen of this country 
can be monitored, tracked, followed. Any surveillance can be made 24 into 7 by those 10 agencies. That particular section gives the power to the investigating agency to decrypt any message which is sent by any agency. But at the same time, one particular company, WhatsApp like, is making an affidavit, filing an affidavit before the Court of Law, Supreme Court, that we cannot share the data. It is not available even with us, is the declaration given by WhatsApp. Think seriously, my dear friends, in this platform. Everybody will say that no, 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 WhatsApp is very, very useful for the people. WhatsApp is so useful for people. Without WhatsApp, people cannot live and all that. Is it so? When the device is given to you free of cost, without any payment for every month, that particular app has gone and reached 100, and crore, 100 crores, 120 crores, become order of the day. Without that, you can't sleep. Without that, you can't even wake up. Without seeing the good morning messages in the WhatsApp, your, your dawns are not complete. Without saying good night, the dust is not complete. Without sending the uh, motivated messages, you don't sleep. Without seeing the messages of something like that. But how the company is ruling? This is where this digital slavery is enforced by using the uh, gadgets. But our own law is not supporting. You must have all read, my friends, the British government has introduced a law which is called the Snooper Charter. Snooper Charter was introduced in 2017 that was challenged before the Court of Law in England. It is made absolute by the <coughs> Supreme Court of England in 2018, July, that 48 departments of the UK now has got access over each and every citizen of their day-to-day -day activities. When all the day-to-day -day activities of a citizen is monitored either by an agency or by an app, or by the government. And here I would like to also say that a particular community called Uyghurs in Chinese, in China, more than 10 crore people are under confinement under 24 into 7 surveillance by the government by using apps. In that particular Uyghur area, Jingxiang province, even if you are buying a small weapon for your kitchen, that has to be embedded with the code by showing your ID card, your address, everything only, they will give you the knife. That knife, once if you enter into your house, you have a QR code entry in your door. That particular owner of the house has to affix his QR code in the door, then only he can have access into your spoon house. That particular weapon, when it is entered into the kitchen, that will be registered with the next available police station this particular weapon purchased from this store with the QR code has entered into this house today. Any person who is going out of the house has to make an entry in the QR code. By the time he has to re-enter into his house, he has to re-enter the QR code. Any third person comes or any other person goes and doesn't return, that will be immediately taken into account by the cadets. They call the police there. It will be recorded by the cadets. Immediately, next minute, the cadets will reach what happened to the person. A new person has come to the house. This is how the privacies of individuals are compromised even today. When artificial intelligence is going to be introduced in the future for the purpose of investigation and other things, humans are going to be implanted with chips with them. That is, we are all going to be called cyber box in the future. Not human. Cyber box will be called a cyber box. We will be implanted with chips. When artificial intelligence, we lawyers must have seen in America, there is one, uh, Mr. Watson, I think Watson is the software developed, which is going to root out the very future of the lawyers. And they say artificial intelligence is going to be used for the purpose of analyzing the character and quality of a person in plea bargaining. For example, in a tested case, the artificial intelligence was used by the juries for giving punishment. The finding given by the, uh, the artificial intelligence, the person is from a particular locality where criminal activities are taking place, probably downtown. Then his race is taken into account. His race, his color, his locality, everything is taken into account between a black and white. The artificial intelligence gives a report 
the black person is likely to commit more offenses in the future the white person is not likely to commit offenses in the near future so in plea bargaining there can be lesser punishment for the white there can be a larger punishment for the black is a finding given if it is going to be used like that by using artificial intelligence for the purpose of even giving punishment in future the gadgets are going to rule the world when the gadgets are going to rule the world i feel personally this particular period of corona covid is a testing platform for using all the technology and other areas are concerned because in the near future by making people to sit at their home confine at their home either by way of a virus or by way of any containment or by any act you will be completely forced mandatorily only to get connected through gadgets if you are forced to live through gadgets your whole life will be operated by using a single remote by a single person the whole meaning of democracy will be scrapped the whole meaning of democracy and free living freedom of expression life everything will be rewritten by the digital world by a person who was having got hold of the whole thing this is the particular message we must register we must underline in reading that if technology is going to be allowed to overlap the lives of the person the owners of the technology will become the super boss of the world attempts are made by way of using the apps the persons who have started revealing those facts to the world have been already punished you might have seen what happened to edward snowden you might have seen what happened to julius assange assange was confined in uk for more than 6 to 7 years in uh, an embassy his asylum status was also cancelled now he is uh, undergoing imprisonment for the bail jump in uk he was monitored having surveillance over his two two bedroom apartment of the taker nicaraguan uh, uh, embassy for more than 5 to 6 years equator after that now he is taken into custody edward snowden has gone to russia we don't know what happened to him both people have started exposing to the world that what's actually happening with the privacy of the people they have been the whistle blowers have been punished they are not allowed to move in public even that uh, uh, julian assange case that they went to the extent of saying that he molested girls in switzerland and uh, uh, he was about to be tried that the switzerland government was uh, demanding for a uh, um, uh, sending him to switzerland finally the prosecution was withdrawn after even after withdrawing the prosecution also he was not able to move freely he is now taken into custody by the british government australian government is introducing a scheme which is called the reverse phone when any photography photographs are taken by people during the course of their interaction or any consensual relationship any personal photograph intimate photographs taken by them if it is used for the purpose of revenge it's called the reverse phone revenge phone the australian government has got a scheme called e save service where if you are blackmailed with your nude photos you will have to submit a fresh nude photo to the government so the government will compare your photos publish in the media and if both the photographs are going to sync together the government will use a technology to remove the photo from the particular site even after making complaints if either facebook or instagram is not removing the government has got a separate scheme in order to protect their citizens from reverse pornography so in a country like india reverse pornography is a way of life even in a consensual relationship both men and women are taking photos recording their personal intimate activities and started sending through whatsapp sharing it to others and though there are so many judgments which have been given that the sharing or even admins can be prosecuted that very recently one judgment has come that admin cannot be prosecuted we are not clear that way we say that whatsapp goes to the extent of filing an affidavit before the court of law supreme court that we will not give the decryption details we cannot share the details and the information technology act says that the certificate must be submitted under 65b 
If certificate is going to be compulsory under 65B, there are three, four judgments already. It has been neutralized by the latest judgment. Even if you don't own the gadget also, you need not bother about it. You can file a self-declaration. But the larger bench judgment, which is given in that case, it still holds good that the compulsory 65B certificate is compulsory. Even in murder cases, what happened very recently here, in one murder case, in the place of occurrence, you know, a photo taken by somebody was shared in WhatsApp. One photograph has reached the investigating officer. That investigating officer who has received the photo in his mobile phone has filed it in the court as a matter of exhibit. Without any particulars, without showing who has forwarded, whether it was really taken from the scene of occurrence, what was the lens you see once you start using your mobile phone and taking photos, you can change the entire scenario. You can change the color, you can add the brightness, you can either bring it to the night effect or evening effect or severe tone or the evening tone, all that. Everything can be brought into. By taking to different angles, you can bring a different picture of a scene of occurrence. Once a photo is taken from a particular scene of occurrence, without seizing that instrument and without taking copies from that instrument, two, three particular photos received by the investigating officer have been filed before the court of law saying that I don't have to give any details. I don't have to file any certificate under 65B. Even self-declaration was also not filed. Of course, that was rejected by the court of law. But when, when the electronic gadget is used for all purposes, I just told you about the, how the investigations can be tampered, how even the movements of the president and prime ministers of any country can be followed and tracked and monitored. Where do we stand humans? See the latest controversy you must have seen. When, when a particular statement was made by the president of a country, Twitter goes to the extent of removing that content, saying that it is against our policy. Because immediately after the George Floyd in, uh, incident in Minneapolis, a statement was given by Mr. Trump. Once if the loot begins, the shoot also begins. This is a particular phaseology used by him. The looters have started looting, so we will start shooting. It was not a content okay with Twitter. Twitter said we will remove the content. But Zuckerberg says it is a freedom of expression. We have limited scope. So even president of a country is not spared. Once a moment, a fire is coming out of that particular gadget by way of a word, it goes like a rapid fire. A small, a small uh, news or a smaller bogles news can reach 100 crores of people in a matter of one hour which can change the whole scenario of a country. But we have not given proper treatment, proper training. We have not given proper awareness. We don't have sufficient law. Only these particular 66 to 65 to 80, 17, 18 sections are only available for offenses, which is taking 24 into seven among 120, 130 crore people. Whether it is sufficient? No. Why the parliament is not marching forward? Because the digital world is not properly introduced to each and every person of the whole world. Because they are not sure. They are not sure. Google was about to make a separate search engine for the Chinese government, which was objected by the Google employees. And Pichai was forced to give a statement before the American Congress in parliament. No, no, we don't have a separate program for any making any service as a search engine for the Chinese. Each and every country is now trying to produce their own search engine. Because one particular search engine, Google has become the boss for each and everything we depend on only the search engine of the Google. I am making requests through all my sessions to the whole country of 120 crores. Why we should not develop our own search engine? in Indian languages. When it is going to be your own search engine, it is coming under the purview of our all enactments and acts. You don't have to go and beg Google, you don't have to go and beg Facebook, you don't have to go and beg Instagram for the purpose of getting details, either through the nodal offices 
or by sending someone to them they simply coolly come to your platform and say no no all our servers are available in foreign country we are unable to give those details to the court of law can any agency be allowed to operate in a country with 120 crore and 130 crore people which openly files an affidavit that this detail cannot be shared end to end encryption end to end encryption is assured we cannot share the details the top most lawyers are appearing for the company and arguing the case in the court but my dear friends but when when privacy is not in our hands when the punishment which is given by the information technology act is very less most of the offenses are compoundable other than the sexual offenses against children some of the against us against women and cyber terrorism most of the offenses are compoundable below 3 years with this law how we are going to govern ourselves you have given the weapons to the people you have given the trigger to the people you have not trained to them when to shoot when to hit it is like a dynamite sleeping in their pocket you do not know anything i do not know anything we do not know anything but we have everything in the cyber space and cyber world there is no privacy everybody is naked everybody is digitally naked i am monitored you are monitored the moment you enter your name the moment you install any app in your computer or in your mobile phone by way of entering your name by way of pressing all the accept 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 you are giving access to every part of your activity to some app some of the apps are designed even without your knowledge it will switch on our your camera and record your activities most of us say that uh, what is there let them take my data and all that my dear friends data is going to be the asset of the future that is why there are particular fields which are operating called data mining the data mining means whatever the data available with the system or whatever the data available in your computer is the source of information for many companies to make their livelihood especially i think during this period of corona covid 19 the entire data of the human kind running into more than 700 billion might have already reached the corporate heads in insolvency or in toto i am not very sure in near future suppose if there is not going to be any dawn out of this problem we don't know for how many months together how many years together we are all forced to sit at home and the digital world is going to rule going to rule the digital world is going to become the order of the day for each and everything even to purchase a small banana if it is not safe to walk in the street you have to make online order and the data will be available to the government this person is diabetic he can take only two bananas so that person is having hypertension this medicine is given from mediplus so this is the medicine supply to the house this is the vegetable supply to the house this is their budget this is this is this is the medicine he is taking arogya sedu is there he is whether he is moving out or that my private movement out of the house even after the compulsory period of 21 days also still the app will be there the app will track my movement it will track my by it will follow my travel even if you are traveling from one place to other place also by crossing the towers you are registering your map of travel the moment you start you are from your house go to the next street you are automatically switching off to the next tower of the mobile phone and your map starts getting registered there and google is following google map is following where you are free where is your privacy there is no privacy we are all living in the naked world digitally naked i started because why i emphasize still that when you are forced to live your life under the supervision of gadget when gadgets are making your life miserable if you do not have proper awareness if you do not have proper legal provisions how to go ahead then we are in a mess the whole mess 
is going to be the investment for the corporate companies who are going to own us in future own us in the means each and every of your activity your purchase your food your medicine will be decided by them already one private corporate company from our country has started purchasing shares and already started having business agreements with the foreign company like facebook and all that slowly they will become boss over you a particular company which was permitted to um sell their sim cards owned by two brothers 10 crore people have purchased sim cards by submitting their aadhar details with that company around 2 3 years back aadhar act says any particular detail is leaked or hacked there is a punishment provision in aadhar act but that particular company after selling more than 10 crores of mobile phones have lodged a complaint that some of the data are breached from our data our from from our servers is the complaint registered by the company wherever you go you are not safe if you go to aadhar even for 500 people by 500 rupees they are making aadhar card in your name aadhar is not safe but privacy is a fundamental right privacy is compromised there is no provision to protect your privacy you are forced to be under digital surveillance you are also always forced to be under uh, supervised when you are supervised uh, monitored tracked where should i live how would we live we should train ourselves to live with the gadgets by having the little knowledge about how legally it should be implemented because each and every incident through the media either can be misrepresented or misinformed in order to verify what is true we must have the real senses with us to verify suppose you go to google and read wikipedia wikipedia you might have seen there is one portion called edit you can enter any detail into wikipedia and come out by putting your own input there is no uh, censorship there is no censorship in visual media there is no censorship for youtube anything you can upload just like that you can come out so my dear friends especially after the incident of george floyd in minneapolis the reach of the media the reach of the content matters because when we are sitting at home we see people are violating not by not wearing masks it gives you a news oh when so many people in america is not wearing mask why should i wear mask so you are copying pasting the activities of the people by seeing the activities in cyberspace but we do not know whether it is right or wrong and one such incident which has triggered the racism in that country has opened so many subjects which is likely to spread but that is not our subject but if anything happens like that all the more possibilities are there that a particular section of people can be targeted that that can be tried and unless or otherwise we have the awareness unless or otherwise what is the relief available in that particular act nothing is available you cannot prosecute a person properly if any 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 pornography there is there is a separate section under pokso act if uh, information technology if cyber space is used for the purpose of pokso act serious punishment is there but nobody is going to prove it before the court of law properly by using the technology so let's all take this as an opportunity to get an introduction to the technology first nobody is an expert even i am a novice every other day i am updating myself by reading either by going through the news what's happening around i am updating myself so that i can share whatever it is available with the common people with my lawyer friends with court of law with judges judiciary and other things so let me take this opportunity and i am very grateful for being with me for this time though i am not used this for this platform we are very much used only by addressing the people in a gathering so there will be little hesitations here and there because this is a new attempt so i i personally feel that i have not completed my entire 
content but still time is running out so i thank everybody for being with me let's all take this only an introduction to the privacy and uh, cyber world and let's all hope that the near future is going to be good and the best for the human kind we'll all pray for that i am very grateful for once again mr vikas for giving me this uh, opportunity to share the platform and whoever has joined in the session i thank everybody i pray for your wellness we'll hope for all the best thank you uh, so thank you uh, it was an extremely session which was quite engaging and <clears throat> after the entire session two things actually come down to the mind as we all invariably say that technology is a great servant but a bad master so as long as we try to use the technology as a servant then it's a it's fine but as long as we try to get engaged with the technology in such a way that it becomes a master then it has its own repercussions after hearing the session one aspect definitely goes in the mind of every participant that as to whether we have actually surrendered to the technology and have we affected our privacy in such a way that it could be really alarming and in fact the insights given by you that too with the examples not only of india but worldwide and what are the effects etc you have touched the various aspects uh, include uh, how the trails of your submission to the technology and the cyber etc and that is why the topics cyber security how are its effect and then certain issues which we normally did like giving a thumb impression let's assume somebody we buy a product on an online and when the as you said the query person comes we, there are certain difficulties <clears throat> we would definitely ask you as to how how about word and the way you said that we all submit ourselves to all this while accepting any application which we are downloading in a lighter way i am reminded that we we often say that when we actually give our acceptance to any technology and to any any, any application it is just like once we are accepting to the all vows which we give at the time of marriage without actually seeing as to whether we have understood the whatever vow we have done when the pandit says that you are accepting this vow everybody says yes if actually one would have accepted the vows and done in the manner it would have been then the litigation on the domestic front at least would not have come but that that was all in a lighter way we would be taking questions but uh, i personally feel that large number of issues you have already touched but before we take the questions i will ask just nagamatu who has been kind enough i have just i was just looking at the participants i just saw that this is nagamatu who has also given us the insights on a different topics fortuitously enough he is also on the platform it only shows one aspect of just as nagamatu that despite the fact that he is so knowledgeful he is uh, himself coming forth to listen to this session it shows on mr vikas uh, so thank you very much for uh, having called me and in fact uh, as mr balu very aptly put it we are all uh, this is cyber space or cyber um, crime uh, illiterates we do not know anything therefore this is a good time for us to learn at least to safeguard our own personal interest and personal uh, our own privacy that is why i have been here and i thank you for providing such a very good platform and this this lecture has given a lot of information to us as to how to protect ourselves thank you mr vikas and mr balu thank you sir i my all my greetings to you and it was thank really a wonderful lecture thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you mr vikas right sir special thanks to you so word of thanks uh, word of the insights being learned coming from just nagamatu itself shows that the session was engaging i will just take uh there are only few questions the persons who actually want to uh, post the questions they can do that
in fact I, i've just seen that one question has come invariably uh varun mahajan uh, facebook hacking and getting money transferred from the no is getting normal what is your view on the same i don't have to say anything about that because once if you get any request for uh, money transfer and all that you must be always aware whether that person is known to you first and whether the transfer is really essential nowadays you have phone you can just like that call that person and find out whether you have really made a request and all that you must have seen a incident which had taken for a supreme court judge one year back both of them were sitting together in the same bench even after retirement also they were attending some arbitrations and other things one day a message was received by a particular judge saying that that judge's relative is admitted in the hospital immediately 1 lakh has to be transferred by using electronic transfer he made a transfer of 1 lakh next day also he was sitting with them he did not even verify whether you required that money you sent a, a, a request for that i transferred the money after some time some more amount was taken from his account then only he verifies uh, did you receive any money from my account because there was one urgent request from your account on that night then both of them uh, shocked together and uh, registered a complaint after some this had happened to a bench of our own supreme court once a request comes there is a phone you just call that person find out whether there is any requirement why by seeing a message in the facebook you should go to that just avoid it that's all i can say all physical verifications are available am i right uh, yes sir so varun marjan he he himself uh, advocate rp singh says how to prevent security theft a uh, theft and avoid misuse of cyber privacy the only thing we must you must doubly ensure by seeing the messages whether it is from a genuine person <laughs> suppose you receive a mail you must see whether that mail is served from a secured mail server or not because once if you go and see that if it is a secured mail the test will be there most of us don't verify or you will have to just forget it and allow it to just be there if anybody is calling you over the phone and asking details through mobile phone or through your mobile don't submit any details suppose if it is coming in the name of your bank you call your bank and verify whether you sent any mail to me asking for details for example sbi will be there sbi means state bank of india they will put a small i together we will not see it we will see it as sbi okay. so by seeing the proper address of the mail id first whether it that is proper for example icici bank is there suppose iic is there nobody will be able to read it first they will see iici but they will think it is icici then they will start uh, giving the particulars never respond anything over the mail for example i'll tell you two days back i received a message this is very very important immediate please contact me through this mail that name is known to me that is why i got confused when that name is known to me i got confused normally i never respond to such messages and mails i never touch that i forgot it once if it is not repeated the moment you ignore it if it is not repeated you can be sure it is a scam if it is really a known person they will start attempting to reach you suppose you are not responding to your mail they will call you over the phone or they will send you a message or at least through whatsapp so what is the urgency by reading a mail and submitting your details heaven is not going to fall check double check cross check then submit always the physical verification is still available if you are not very clear with the technical details approach a person within your home who are little having knowledge about the space whether it could be done or not that is the only way to come out so we have unmuted mr lal uh, he would like to ask the question directly mr lal uh good evening sir yeah thanks for a very uh, great very great insights and uh, sir my question is that in this case uh, when there is a personal data which is being taken by the people and uh, in various forms and there are less remedies how does a person protect himself you have answered it in the previous uh, 
uh, question to advocate R.P. Singh, but any other precautions or any other thing where an individual can protect themselves by uh, by the personal data which is being taken, and this personal data is being used by the corporates as you have mentioned in various forms for their benefit. See, as such, we are not technically superior. You you must always have an interaction with people who are well versed with computers and internet activities and other things. Then we must have a legal thinking over that. Get trained from them, then to apply. Because as a lawyer, as a lawyer, what I could do is you can do this. You need not do this. How it should be done technically means we must also have interaction and try to learn. For example, if you have a doubt, immediately you can go to Google and search for it and find out whether it is right or not. For example, if to if, suppose if you want to crack a password, you just type it out how to crack a password. You will get one. Uh, 10, 10, 10 lakh 50 thousand pages to crack a password. By going through that, anybody can have an idea how to crack a password. Then we must be doubly assured to, in order to maintain our password, it is always advised that it must be either a long password or with a capital letter and small letter, higher case, lower case, upper case, lower case, uh, mingled with alphabets and uh, numbers. All that should be mingled. For example, even sometimes it is suggested, don't try to have a password which is common for everyone. Triple six, date of birth, car number, like that. To, to humorously, it is even uh, introduced that you can even have the uh, pet name of your dog or cat as your password temporarily. Sorry, if you have a pet word for anybody in your pet name for your uh, somebody in your house, that can be used. Even the name of a movie can be used as a password for quite some time. You must keep on changing your password for mail, for anything. And that password should not be stored in your device. This is my password. This is my ATM password. This is my, the moment your device is looted by somebody, then everything goes to his hands. So the habit of changing the password is another problem mentally. I'll tell you, this is a great difficulty. If you have 100 accounts, you, you, need, you cannot have 100 passwords. It is humanly impossible to remember everything. As I said, that the first casualty is our memory after the uh, introduction of gadgets. So have a separate notebook and write your passwords and keep it in your pocket always very safe. That is the old way of remembering your phone numbers. Like that password, you have a separate small the notebook in your that and keep it always. Because we are opening so many accounts. That is one way of remembering and keep on changing it. Don't always try to go for guessable passwords, especially the name of the children, date of birth, marriage day, which can be easily guessed by people is attended by them. Even I am told the moment you start entering into any account, the next minute you are going to type out the password. When you are going to type out the password, which letters or numbers are very often used, that is also tracked by the hackers. How many keyboards are very often used? After entering your mail ID, you are entering your password. Suppose you are starting with A. A is the first keyboard you are touching. Then that particular press is uh, tracked. In such a way, technology is improved. People can steal everything, including your password. So the only way is keep on changing it very often. Don't have a password forever. So uh, we've unmuted Vishnu. Vishnu wants to ask a question directly. Vishnu, you can ask the question. Yes. Hello, hello. Good evening, sir. First of all, I would like to thank you for a, such a wonderful seminar, sir. My question is that every day I receive over fifty to hundred messages on my email. I never come to know who sends me such a messages. Most of them are promotion messages, or so many such messages. So how can I prevent such messages? Uh, or I can delete them because many times I could not delete them. I get such messages again and again and again. I have the same problem, uh, my dear friend. The problem is the moment we start using any ATM card or a petroleum card, that when you, when you use your ATM card or any petrol card in any petrol bank or you make any purchase, your email is automatically registered by those companies 
and those data are sold by those companies to the survey for other people for marketing for example if i fill petrol by paying cash that week i will be getting letter lesser messages suppose i make my payment by using my atm card i can be sure next week i'll be getting minimum 50 to 100 mails i have a normal way of doing it i don't read it simply i'll go delete it that's all the moment i see the headings of the message i know whether it is meant for me or not otherwise i'm very far sure it is a marketing message immediately i select the delete button and finish it other than that i don't have any remedy at present you cannot prevent it because you are now being forced by government agencies to use digital payment and your card is used your card is registered everywhere with your email id once your card is registered with your email id you make any purchase they have your data and the and, and the data data protection act which has not been given into effect i don't know whether it is going to speak for it or not we will have to wait for it and see till then the only way is to uh, de depend on the delete button physically no other way go select all in a bulk and just delete it and send it to the dustbin don't read it uh so we have unmuted rivati ji mohan uh the question can be asked rivati 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 yeah hello sir good evening yes please yeah sir uh, it was a wonderful session and i learned a lot about this digital world thank you now uh, since uh, now you said that uh, when the courier uh, courier person comes with a courier and uh, you should not sign it on the digital uh, board but if he doesn't have any paper uh, he doesn't have a physical paper or anything to sign and he asks us to do the signature so uh, how he, do we he, do it he cannot compel you i have done many times uh -huh. i said i will not affix my signature whether if you want to deliver the good deliver or you take it back to your company then immediately you'll say sorry okay sir i'll make entry on my own that it is delivered and we'll give you be firm on it okay thank you sir yeah so one last question we will take and then otherwise yes sir uh, i'm just saying live is there live log it says i am a cyber forensic practicing for last uh, from last 14 years uh mr balume ji hackers need uh, needs permissions to access your account don't you think it's a mindset in india only as you have also said off camera is assessing us any time and whole world is naked it's the starting of cyber crime definitely we have to learn from him he only has to teach us because as i told you and if once if any access is given for any apps to steal our account whether they are accountable because that server is available in a foreign country remote place they are not accountable only thing you can register a case that is why all the technology must be given to illiterate people also that when you are downloading an app you decide whether the app is required for you if it is made mandatory by the government then the government should come forward educate the people how it is safe how it should be done they should sensitize without sensitizing anything you cannot keep on doing everything and depend on the cyber forensic even cyber forensic can fail sometimes so i am afraid of that particular whole area how it has been done how it is hacked and all that the remedy when the remedy is not available why should be install it unless or otherwise it is a mandatory or it's a must for you just for the sake of fun just for the fun of game and all that take it an exam take example of the pubg game what pubg game has brought into india pubg game has made all the adults are violators of law and violent in their activities both in words and action blue whale came that suicide tendency was going on blue whale came pubg game each and everything will keep on coming then i i request always through the media the moment something is illegal going on the duty of the icrt is only for that purpose the duty given to the computer emergency response team is to advise the government they they been empowered to do that i don't know what they are doing by sitting in seven star hotels or five star hotels and what are the decisions taken by them they must be the first person to create the awareness it is made as a law in information technology act 
they should take the initiative they should interact with cyber forensic people and come out with a white paper this is technically safe this is technically not safe then sensitize the people at least through the government channels private channels will not do we are having more than 2000 television channels in india any such warning messages can reach the mass of 130 crores within a matter of one hour who should take the initiative so government should have a separate initiative by interacting with the cert by interacting with them getting the advisory from them then it should reach the masses in vernacular language that is how we could uh, uh, educate the people in near future it is a must i feel uh, thank you sir uh, yeah. the questions will continue to pour but uh, we generally believe in the time straight part after the webinar one thing has actually come to our mind that prevention is better than cure and the insights given by you definitely, definitely gives us a belief that what insights you have given we should at least try to have try to uh one you have to uh, unmute uh, mute yourself thank you thank you vikas uh, yeah, so it was a wonderful session and thanks for the opportunity thanks for all see you all and tomorrow we have a session on risk management and economy which is very relevant tomorrow we have three speakers mr anil kishora who is a former dmd of uh, and chief risk officer of the state bank of india navleen kundra who is a consultant in shifalik mercantile and he had been a uh, general manager in the oriental bank and then mr amarji chopra who is a chartered accountant by profession and former president of indian institute of uh, chartered accountants so do stay connected again tomorrow at 5 pm uh, thank you everyone uh, stay connected stay blessed all the participants we are thankful to you i on behalf of beyond loss tlc and ulrs punjab university chandigarh thank all the participants and tomorrow same time but with a different topic thank you everyone stay safe stay blessed